this is the equipment that you would need for three to seven days going out touring. I'm going to use my mouse cursor to show you around uh, this image. So the first thing you need is a good board, a board that you're secure with. I went paddling on a solo expedition this time and I took a large touring inflatable. I also took a repair kit and a pump with me but I've not shown that on this image. If you take an inflatable you're probably going to need something 11 foot plus to carry all the gear. If you're taking a hard board probably going to need something 11 and a half foot plus. This is for adults, um, for kids or uh, much lighter people you can get away with something a lot smaller. So a good quality touring board that will carry a lot of gear is the first thing you're going to need. Second thing that you're definitely going to need to take with you is a spare paddle. It's just a cheap alloy paddle that I took with me just in case my first choice paddle, my carbon fiber paddle, which I'm going to talk about in a minute, gets broken or sinks to the bottom of the lake. So just a backup paddle. If there's a group of you, you probably need one backup paddle between you, but if you're traveling solo, you definitely need to still take one. Going on to my actual paddle, if you're paddling over several days, you're probably going to be covering tens or hundreds of kilometers, so you're going to be putting in tens of thousands of strokes. So you don't be getting any kind of a repetitive strain injury. So I recommend a really good quality carbon fiber paddle. Uh, something that's not going to be too much of a strain on your shoulders and on your hands and your wrists and your joints. So definitely get one sized up or an adjustable and make sure that it's something that you've practiced with. Next thing is a couple of sets of clothing, lots of spare underwear, um, at least two sets of clothing. I took three sets. I think that would be sufficient for a week. And a really good pillow if you want to have a good night's sleep. Next thing is a wet towel. So underneath this towel is my drinking water and anything I want to keep cool like fresh eggs. So what happens is if you keep this towel wet then you get evaporation and even though it was something between 32 and 35 degrees depending on the time of day the water evaporating provides a cooling effect and actually the water is quite nice to drink then. So really essential to have a way of keeping your drinking water cool. Talking about water, I, I took a, a Grail filtration device which I'll talk to you about on, on a separate video. Next thing I took was sleeping mats and a three-man tent. I use the self-inflating kind of mats. I use two. One so that if there is a problem with one of them, I've got redundancy and I can use the other one. Second reason is I like to be comfortable. I like to get a good night's sleep. Those self-inflating ones are very comfortable. Make sure when you roll it up, you roll it up and expel all the air and then you close the valve so that the thing is smaller than the bag. Otherwise it will expand to fill the bag that you've put it in. And then it's a real hard job to get it out. Um, the tent I took was a three-person tent. And the reason I took that is because I'm rather large, but also all of this gear then can go in the tent with me and I'm not worried about animals accessing it or humans if there are any around. Next thing I uh, took was uh, my uh, sleeping accommodation so a sheet and a light quilt is what I use. I don't like sleeping bags very much. You can use a sleeping bag or you could use um, if it's hot probably get away with an inner bag. Um, it's in Thailand where I am, a scenic green area north of Kanchanaburi it's about 24 to 26 degrees at night so you probably still need some kind of a blanket when it gets hotter in April May probably don't need anything map and compass is essential it's the next thing that's on my uh, diagram here that was the main thing I used for my navigation uh, but not the only thing I'll talk about navigation separately but it, the map and compass is there it can't fall in the water it's affixed to a clipboard which is affixed to this bungee here but it's available for me to look at at all times Underneath there is this uh, red, what I call a ready-use dry bag. It's got my uh, my sun protection lotion, lip balm, and um, insect repellent. My smartphone is in there uh, with obviously with camera and other navigation systems, 
Um, smartphones got no 3G where I was. It was completely in the wilderness. No 3G, no phone signal, but your smartphone can still access, access satellites. So it is a really useful navigation tool. So I'll talk about that later. I've also got a backup handheld GPS in there as well and spare batteries and my head torch as well. Next thing is uh, your personal flotation device. I just use the cheap ones from Decathlon. Um, they do the job. You must take one with you. They're actually not uncomfortable at all once you're used to them. Um, the cheap ones, you barely know that you've got them on. And um, the other great thing about wearing a PFD is you can dunk it in the water every 15 minutes and the water evaporates and keeps you cool. And then you need a good wide brimmed hat. It'll keep the sun off the back of your neck and off the top part of your face. Protect your eyes as well, as well as your sunglasses. Sunglasses also in the ready use bag. Next thing I'm going to talk about is my uh, cooking equipment. So in this yellow bag here, I had all of my cooking equipment. Gas powered stove with two gas cylinders. Plus I had a solid fuel stove that I could have used in a way of uh, making fire as well as that and there's also some um, dried food in the bag and all of my utensils and cooking pans and pots and all the rest of it. Always take lots of bungees with you because bungees are useful for if the bungees on the board break um, sometimes they detach themselves from the board and of course take some rope as well and my rope was in my ready use bag. Rope is useful for securing your board overnight. Between my cool box and this cooking equipment bag. I've also got a 12 volt motorcycle battery which uh, provides me with all of my power needs. I didn't actually use it because the, the next thing I'm going to talk about is the solar panel. The solar panel has got a USB connection on it. Um, that takes about three hours to charge up an iPhone or an iPad. Um, so I'll give you all your power needs probably that you need uh, on your trip if you've got lots of AA batteries with you as well. There's plenty probably didn't need the 12 volt battery but if there's a group of you going then it's probably wise to take um, a large power pack or a 12 volt battery between you. Finally my cool bag you could quite equally take a cool box now if you pack everything in there frozen frozen chicken frozen meat inside there are actually polystyrene boxes as well which have got my meat in there but I've got frozen water also got frozen protein shakes a protein shake is a good meal substitute so I took five six liters of protein shakes frozen of course because it's frozen it keeps the cool bag cool I reckon you could probably keep that cool for five or six days providing you don't open it more than twice a day so that's pretty much everything that's my whole kit all of this stuff here weighed uh, I estimate between uh, 50 and 60 kilos and I weigh about 90 so that board's carrying about 140 150 kilos so you need a board that can carry that amount of weight without uh, its performance being affected too much